Hello, I'm Jonathan O'Toole. I'm here with uh, Robert Rudnick, my uh, friend and compatriot. On our way to Washington, D.C., someone had written our uh, Project C, and we are here with Project C. That's, part, pr that's an acronym for S-E-E. -E. Not the letter C, but S-E-E. -E, Project S-E-E -E for Stop Exporting Evil. And under this and these specific circumstances, we are directing those words toward the Western world, which has apostatized, gone against God, and specific, specifically toward the United States of America. So we are a little bit east of Columbus, Ohio right now on a big road trip that started in far uh, northwestern uh, North Dakota, not far from the border with uh, Montana and Saskatchewan. And so we're almost two days into this road trip on the way to D.C. And someone, uh, specifically our friend Dr. Ali, uh, wrote with some valid criticisms of the Proud Boys. And I would agree with the Proud Boys on some points. There are many, there are very few people in this world <laughs> that I wouldn't agree with them on some points. Couldn't find a common ground as a human being and even as a Christian. But I am not a Proud Boy. Neither am I. And the reason that I'm going to... Washington DC is not to demonstrate pride or to be a proud boy, but to be a repentant man. I am a repentant man. After the model of Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, the prophet Daniel said, Lord, righteousness, that is justice, righteousness belongs to you, O Lord. And Daniel, who was very innocent among the children of Israel, who would come to be called uh, Jews after the Babylonian captivity, some of them, the ones who repented in the tradition of Daniel and the later prophets. But he said, righteousness belongs to God, but unto us confusion of faces. And I stand with Daniel and in the spirit of confession and in the spirit of Daniel, in the spirit of repentance, asking the great and dreadful God, who is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, for mercy. And that is why Brother Rob and I have left our uh, work and driven halfway across uh, North America to go to Washington, D.C., not because we're proud boys, because we're doing our best. God, help us. Lord, have mercy on us to demonstrate repentance, to be repentant men, and to call other men, including you proud boys, we are calling you to repentance at this time of confusion, this time where the United States of America is being torn apart we're trying to tell people that the point of departure is where we disobeyed the Lord Jesus Christ, specifically in legalizing the abominations of child sacrifice, of sterilizing people, of sodomy, of desecrating the sexual union by, by making laws that, um, that made it, uh, that legalized and endorsed evil instead of punishing it and punished good, which would, what would good be? To defend and to offensively protect the preborn. Now I'll turn the floor over to Rob as we continue our journey. He's a little bit tired. He's been driving all day. I just woke up. I'm getting ready to drive all night to pick up our friend Nathaniel Provan near Pittsburgh. So we're on our way to Pittsburgh and then uh, to Washington, D.C. Now we hope to arrive in the wee hours of the morning before the main caravan coming up from the southeast uh, to, to support President Trump. President Trump is a real regular person in many ways. You know, he's as ethically challenged as anybody else in the West in many ways, and yet he's shown a willingness to fight, and he show, showed a willingness to step out in faith, and he showed a willingness to uh, begin to uh, go up against a very demonic World Bank, UN, New World Order, a uh, system of total evil, and that's why, that's why they hate him. And, I mean, it's beyond hatred. I mean, so that's where why we're showing solidarity with him, not because no. we don't think there are evil people behind him too, no. but because it's become crystal clear to us that the people, the most evil people, who are truly opposed, specifically on the issue of of sending money to Africa and to the entire world to murder their children, we have felt the palpable difference. So we've got to give credit to whom credit is due. And if he gets uh, firmly ensconced back into office, I'll be criticizing him again. I'm still criticizing him now, but it's more important right now to demonstrate solidarity with the rule of law because absolute demons in the persons of, just symbolized by these nobodies, 
Biden and Harris, you know. Just for starters. But the people behind them are absolutely ready. I mean, Planned Parenthood in Nairobi is already advertising our friends of, in Ken, and family in Kenya. My family have told me, already advertising to hire help more wanted. people. Yeah, yeah, help brother. wanted. Because they know the money's coming. Yeah. And the bottom line is, whatever else you think about Trump, and he has pissed me off royally, but he did throttle that money. That's a fact. And many of the Africans have their mind around it. I'll tell you what, the whole world has had their imagination captured by this uh, epic, uh, unprecedented uh, election here. And uh, uh, it, it, it reinforces what I've been saying for a long time. The polit well, Sun Tzu said politics is war by all, uh, war is politics by other means. I suggest to you that the inverse is true, that law and politics are war by other the means. The inverse is true. Yeah. And so uh, uh, this really reinforces what I've been saying about that. This is, you know, and uh, the, the opposing factions in this country absolutely hate each other. This is a nation of 350 million people, so 175 million people see it one way and hate the other 175 million that look at it the opposite way. It's, it's appearing to be irreconcilable. This could be some very serious, unprecedented judgment coming up, which we richly deserve. So we are going to Washington, D.C., not as proud boys, but as repentant men. Not, uh, Trump is not our messiah. We're supporting him to the degree that he is obeying God and only that far. I think I, is that correct? Right, right. Yeah. And we all need, we all need to be more repentant and more obedient. This is what we're going to do. We're going to, God willing, we're going to be able to show the hideous pictures of what abortion looks like. We're going to be able to address it visually on videos, uh, address it verbally on videos that we will send around, including to our friends in Africa who hopefully can send it all over the continent. And we are there to give a voice to the millions of babies around the world, billions really, ripped yeah, apart just... by legalized abortion. We've got their pictures. More through banners all, than we can all hold. Nine months, yeah. Through all nine months, for any reason or none at all, uh, under mere color of law and mere, pres uh, mere pretense of medicine. Mere yeah. color of law, let me repeat, Rob. Yeah. Mere, mere pretense, pretense of, of medicine. medicine. Totally exo-hippocratic. Total abandonment of the Hippocratic tradition. Never oh, mind yeah. the Christian tradition. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. And so, uh, when we're going to be God willing, we're going to set up and, and talk about this. There's going to be a lot of really highly rated media there who've been covering this whole story for decades. And we're there to preach repentance to them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah. I'll tell you what, there's, there's, there's a guy... And in, to ourselves. I repent. I repent. I repent. You know, I, I am no paragon of virtue. You know, I guess God has to walk in some old pair of shoes in the closet. I don't know. Hopefully we're doing that. We're praying that we're doing that. And, uh, uh, you know... Can't get rich in politics unless you're a crook. So I, I so guess God we must not be you. crooks. We must not be crooks. <laughs> because we're we not rich. Thank you for your prayer support. Yes. Thank you for your prayer covering. We love all of you uh, who are helping us and praying uh, with us and repenting alongside us. And now we'll leave you with the words of the prophet Daniel, uh, his prayer of repentance from Daniel chapter 9. Chapter 9. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes and our fathers and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as at this day to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses, 
though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. For unto the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities, and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil, and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and hast gotten thee renown as at this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain. Because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousnesses, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O my God. For thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me, and talked with me, and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter, and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate.